What's up, everybody? Welcome to Jack's Junkyard, Season 1, Episode 9. I am your host, Jack Keesling. Super excited to bring the show to you today. We've got a bunch of fun stuff laid ahead for you. I'll be featuring an exclusive interview with the up-and-coming performing artist, Lokana. If you have not seen her debut single and the music video associated with it on YouTube, a link is in the description, and you need to check it out. She's awesome, right? She's a young performing artist with a bright, bright career and future ahead of her. Really excited to see where she goes in the future. Also have a super tapperific talent performance today, something we have not seen on the stage at Junkyard's Got Talent before, featuring the one, the only, Shums. We also have good news stories, updates on what's going on in my world, and a whole bunch of other stuff, so stick around through the whole thing. You're not going to want to miss a minute of the show. Before we get started tonight, I just want to point out to you, it might seem a little strange that I'm wearing these goofy glasses on my face. If you did not already see, I uploaded a video to my YouTube channel about unboxing these beauties right here. These are blue light filtering glasses. I already have blue light filtering glasses, but they're prescription and I can't wear them in all situations because of the way the prescription is on them. So it was suggested to me to get blue light glasses that are non-prescription so I can wear them all the time when I'm dealing with like electronic stuff. So I was like, okay, you know, I'll check it out. So I ordered them on Amazon, I got them today, uh, I did this whole cool unboxing thing and I played with them a bunch and it was super, super fun. So go over to my YouTube channel, super easy to find, it's Jack Kiesling on YouTube, and check out the video, super awesome. Uh, in that video, I said that I would wear these glasses on the show today. Nothing is strange anymore with you. Fantastic. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> You're blasting it as loud as you blast Glass Helix. That's awesome. Yeah, I, I love my theme song. I love my theme music. Uh, that was written and composed and recorded for me by uh, exclusively for the show by Ricardo Viana, who is the sin qua non of, of rock and metal drummers. He's currently uh, the drummer for Blackwood Renegades, BNHO, and my personal favorite, The Veer Union, right? And they just put out some new stuff. They're getting ready to release some other new stuff. So it was really awesome to work with him and, and get him to do that theme song for me. Um, yeah, I love it. It's awesome. So awesome. <sighs> Fantastic. I say awesome so many awesome times. <laughs> You know, before we get too deep into what's going on in my world, I think it's really important that we share some time with somebody new who's got a lot to say. She just released her debut single, and I think, you know, it's time for a good junkyard interview. What you're about to see is footage that I recorded conducting a junkyard interview with Lokana. I, we did this interview a week and a half ago, so you may notice during the interview she says that the music video for her first song is about to be released. It has been released and you can find it on YouTube simply by following the link in the description. All right, let's check out what Lokana had to say. Good evening. Welcome to Junkyard Interviews. I'm your host, Jack Keesling. Sitting down with me tonight is Lokana, who just released her very first single, available on Spotify, YouTube, and a whole bunch of other stuff. Lokana, why don't you tell us about yourself? I am Lokana. Um, I live in Littleton, Colorado, and I've been making music for about almost two years. Two years. Okay. And so you just released your first single, it's called Ride or Die. Um, really, really good song. So I, I found it on the internet a couple of days ago. I've listened to it a ton of times since then. What was the process like writing that song for you? So anytime I write a song, it's really weird. I don't sit down and I'm like, hey, I want to write a song. I kind of just like will be doing my everyday thing and then like a melody and lyrics will pop in my head. So it's not like I'm just like, I get I don't know, it just like randomly comes to me and I, I hear the melody, I hear like, okay, piano's gonna go here and it's weird. Like I just, I get the full song. That's and so awesome. that's pretty much just like write it and, and then yeah, and then I go to the studio and I sit down with producers and it just happens. <laughs> it just, I just make the song. So how long was the process for, for this first single? So I want to say I wrote Ride or Die back in maybe January. And then um, I went to California because that's where I usually record. Um, and I met with this producer who is now my manager. And we made the song. Um, I wrote the song all by myself. And then I had a top liner for that song. Her name's Sadie Cage. And... Um, pretty much what a top liner does is they go in and they're like, okay, hey, instead of maybe doing 
blah, 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 blah. You are, we could do, I am, or, you know, so it's pretty much just going in kind of like the, the auto corrector, you know, of, you know, the music industry. And they're like, okay, let's just, you know, edit this a little bit. And so, um, we did that. Um, we got the song recorded in a couple hours. It was already written when I brought it in. Um, so, I mean, it was really easy. And then that was back in March and then COVID hit. And so it was delayed for a long time. And then, um, I talked to my manager and I was like, Hey, I'm going to get this out. And we're like, okay. And so we pretty much just got it out. Um, we had to make a list of like, okay, you know, this is what we're going to do. We got to do teasers up until this day. And then we'll release on this day. We get the music video recorded. And so it took a, a little while, you know, it took a couple months, but it's yeah. out, you know, <laughs> so yeah. It's out. Okay, so it's out. Um, it's, it hasn't been out very long, but it's already getting a huge positive reception on, on social media, on YouTube, like a, a really good response. What's that feel like for you? It's, it's crazy. I mean, I, I've always wanted, you know, I started writing back in, I think it was 2018, but um, I've been singing my whole life. And so, you know, it's, it's been crazy. It's like, hearing and seeing other people reacting to my song just like listening to it I'm like that's me you know and just like hearing and seeing it you know being able like to see it on Spotify and like YouTube and you know like I that's stuff I've dreamed about and so for it to finally be out it's it's crazy it's been and seeing you know all the positive feedback it's 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 heartwarming it's, it's it really makes me happy <laughs> and I love doing what I do. love you know it's it's what I love so right that's amazing Okay, so you you have a manager, your first single's out, what's next? Um, we're gonna be doing um well the the music video comes out pretty soon and then we're just what we're planning on doing is um dropping songs pretty much every month. So there should be another one next month and then in the future I see myself, you know, like touring and stuff when the world opens back up, you know, whenever yeah. that may be, but yeah, as of now, we're just, you know, making music for, you know, people to hear and people that love my voice, so it's, we're, we're excited. There's there's a lot that's, you know, going into Lokana, you know, so. Sure, yeah. So, okay, it seems like everything's going right, but we know there's always other pieces to the story. So what what challenges have you come up against as you've started this this journey in your career? Hmm. That's a, I mean, there's a lot of challenges, you know, it's, I didn't grow up with, you know, like, none of my family were really, like, in the music industry, like, you know, my, my uncle does music and stuff, but I didn't really have, like, connections growing up, you know, so, you know, it wasn't, like, handed to me, so I really had to, you know, work for everything, and it's, it's been hard, you know, it's, it's not easy just, like, hey, I have a manager now, and hey, I'm releasing music, it's, like, it was a lot of hard work and that's it just makes the journey even better you know because like I it wasn't handed to me you know it's not like oh my mom's a celebrity or and you know my uncle is in the music industry and so he you know like it was it was a lot of work <laughs> what was the hardest thing um I don't know there I I just get lucky I guess I mean there wasn't really anything too hard for me. I mean, I ran into a bump in the road not too long ago. Um, we recorded the music video actually for Ride or Die and the company that I recorded it with, um, they actually held the music video hostage and they were demanding like a crazy amount of money. Um, it all got worked out in the end. I didn't end up using that footage. I still have love for them, you know, but um, it was like, whoa, wait, that, that happens? And it's like, I'm sure there's going to be plenty more of craziness that goes on as, you know, my, my career ages and stuff. But it, it was shocking. It was like, wait, that, that happens? You know, so. Right. Uh. I haven't seen any negative reactions to your songs on any of the platforms yet. Have you gotten any negative backlash? I mean, not that I have seen. I mean, I've seen all good, which I'm sure, you know, like behind the scenes, there's always little, you know, haters and stuff, which I've, I've been, you know, used to that before. Like, I don't know, there, no matter what you do, there's always going to be, you know, that one person who doesn't like what you do. But I mean, that's just a part of, that's just a part of life. So it's like, 
I've gotten used to it. You know, it's like, that's the industry I'm going into. So, you know, I, I got to have that mind and mentality of like, it doesn't matter. Like, look at all the good things you've got. You're like, there's one little one, but look at all the good, you know, so that's yeah. it. <laughs> okay. So influences, who, who do you listen to? Who inspires your work? Who do you, who do you admire? I mean, I listen to only like rappers and stuff. Like I listen to, you know, like old music, but um, I mainly listen to, you know, like rappers and stuff. I listen to um, some of my favorite uh, rappers are like Ski Mask the Slump God and YNW Melly. Like these are like, you know, like hardcore rappers. And I don't know, I, I get that question a lot. And it's like, I don't know, people expect me to be like Ariana Grande just because like the, the music that I make. Sure. But I mean... I don't know, like, it's funny, the the music that I make, it's really not made for me. Like, if I was somebody else, I wouldn't listen to it just because I only listen to, you know, like, rappers and stuff. So it's weird, like, me being the one who makes it, but I wouldn't personally listen to it. That's that's interesting. So um, you're, you are Hawaiian. Your family is, is from the islands originally. Um, what kind of influence do you think that, that that origin culture will have on your music moving forward? I've always wanted to have kind of like a a reggae song, which is like interesting or like, I don't know, like we, my mom, you know, would show me like Bob Marley and stuff. And I was always like, oh my gosh, or um, Five Plus, I think it, they're called. Um, and so I don't know, like just the song with like ukulele and, you know, some, some bongos or something. I don't know, would just be super like cute. I think that'd be, and you know, my, my family, you know, in Hawaii would, eat that up <laughs> they, they oh, would yeah. love that <laughs> so any chance of you ever partnering partnering with the becker band it's funny whenever i go to their gigs um there there have been like a couple times where like uh i'd be invited to like sing on stage i'd be like okay and so we me and um my uncle would just uh we'd sing we should sing picture we haven't i don't know if he knows how to play that on um on the guitar because he has only been playing the guitar for so long you know he fascinates me when it comes to like his crowd control like i remember um like hearing you compliment him about you know his his um his performances and stuff because he's so good with the crowds and i've always been like fascinated about that because he can just like get people up and like singing and dancing and i'm like that is so cool so i want to take you know something from that like take you know like from him yeah. Oh, yeah. He's a super magnetic guy. As soon as yeah. he comes up on stage and starts talking, everybody pays attention. But so exactly. that's something that's very soon in your near future, hopefully, with COVID over, you know, exactly. live performances and shows. So, I mean, mm -hmm. what, what are your thoughts? How do you get up there and grab that audience, audience's attention and take them on that ride? I mean, I don't know. Like, um, for some reason, because I've, I've always been, you know, singing and doing stuff on stage like I would do you know karaoke's or uh there was this one time where I was I think I just turned five um and my mom brought me and like my little sister to this his name's Stuart Davis um and he uh he was like singing in Boulder or something and um I would we were just like sitting in the crowd and he was like okay does anyone have any questions and I raised my little hand and I go can I sing now? And so he brought me up on stage being, <laughs> he was so nice. Um, I just got in contact with him actually, but um, he, he invited me on stage. Like he, he let me go up, <laughs> which I was so surprised. And he let me, he let me just take his mic away and like just sing. And so, I mean, I've never been really scared to go up on stage. Like as soon as I get up on stage, I kind of get my alter ego, like look on her. Like, <laughs> so. Anything you want to throw out there to the fans before we end the interview? um you can see what i do on all my social medias um i don't know if you link um uh social yeah, media yeah. so yeah we can we can link that and then go stream my song ride or die which is on all platforms yeah definitely well thank you so much for sitting down with us on junkyard interviews um hopefully we'll see you back at some point in the future thank you so much for having me this is so fun so let me just throw this out there. Uh, interview that I've done with so many people, right? We're, we're looking at this is the eighth interview that I've done so far for this season shows. Uh, we had one episode that didn't have an interview.
because I didn't know that's what I was going to do yet. <laughs> but, uh, you know, I've interviewed a lot of people uh, from nonprofit leaders to, you know, metal bands and, and country bands and stuff like that. Here's what I love about the interview with Lokana, and I didn't realize this in the moment. I didn't realize it until later when I was editing the footage. Um, no matter what question I asked her, it was a positive, bright response. And I think that is just so important in, in today. You know, we think about a lot of what's going on and, and celebrities and, and people that are important and, and they're asked questions during interviews or in the media or their own social media posts and their responses are so negative. But no matter what I asked her, even when I was like, all right, you know, what's, what's the worst thing that's happened to you? And she's like, well, I mean, they held my music video hostage you know, but then she immediately turned that around. She's like, I still got love for him and we worked it out and it's fine. You know, and I think that positivity and that bright smile is so important uh, when we think about how we push forward from the disaster that has been 2020 so far. You know, just something to think about. Um, check her music out. She's really good. Um, she should be releasing a new song here pretty soon within the next couple of weeks or so. And that's that's exciting. She's a very, very talented performer. The quality of work that she put out for her debut single is just mind blowing. So yeah, check out Lakana on uh, YouTube. And later on this week, I'll post this just this interview segment of the show on all of my socials medias and it will have all of her socials medias uh, linked in it. So look out for that and uh, you know share it around as best you can and give this girl some love. She's starting out on a journey that uh, she's gonna she's gonna need the support and the fan base. So I look big behind the desk. Thank you, Chris. <laughs> oh man, I love it, I love it. You know, um, when I think about interviews, it's a long time, like it's 10 minutes that you guys see, but oftentimes we're talking on Zoom for a long period of time. And you know, we need a break sometimes. With that in mind, stand by for these words from your local station. Deanna Hawkins is a retired U.S. Army soldier and Medal of Honor recipient enjoying the quiet life of an artist in Portland, Oregon. Without her knowledge, documents proving diabolical manipulation of the American people, perpetrated by the government, fall into her lap. Forced to run for her life, Deanna must work with unlikely companions to deliver the files to the people. Sinister forces strive to stop her, while an unknown guardian angles for her success. This success could result in the Second American Civil War, while failure could cement the power of tyrants for generations to come. Under the weight of that knowledge, Deanna Hawkins will discover what it means to walk the thin red line between duty and death. Welcome to The News. So anyway, <laughs> COVID-19, pandemic, not good. <laughs> you can't go to the bar with your friends, social distancing, blah, bars, closed down, all that stuff. Jack's Junkyard, powered by Ripid Energy Fuel. Yeah, oh man. Anyway, Miller Beer Company knows that you're super sad that you can't go to bar the bar with your friends, so they've started a giveaway to provide a backyard dive bar for one lucky fan. This magical backyard dive bar features sticky floors, just like every dive bar out there. Functional taps to dispense your favorite crappy beer. <laughs> if Miller sees this, they're gonna be pissed. I don't care, their beer sucks. Um, bar stools from 1970. Look at those in the picture. Look at those things. My grandmama had those in 1969. All right, a popcorn machine, which is awesome. Right? Have your friends over, give them popcorn, charge them for the beer. Love it. There is a chair out front for a bouncer if your neighbors try to invade your bar and you don't want them there. That's pretty cool. They also have so much wood paneling, which really fits with the 1969 aesthetic. I'm, I'm very fond of that. Good job, guys. Um, super dim lighting to cover up the evidence of all your illicit deeds that you conduct in this backyard dive bar. <laughs> um... They feature some really cool beer artwork because whose backyard is not complete without, you know, beer signs everywhere, right? Love it, okay? They also feature double opening doors, right? So if you look on the image there, you see that the doors open at the bottom and the top. So you can open the top if you wanna let people come to the window 
You can open the bottom if you want to let people in, or you can close it all if you want to stand inside, sip beer, and flip off your neighbors. <laughs> um, and finally, this this wonderful prize also comes with a supply of beer for a year. Now, some of my friends can drink a lot of beer, so I don't know how long that supply would actually last, but that's okay. If you want to enter this contest to get this Backyard Dive Bar, you must be 21 or older to enter, and you simply text Dive Bar, one word, to 90464. 90464 dive bar you'll get a link in response to that that will give you the official entry form yeah nothing but basic information has to be put on that entry form so no credit card information or anything like that the contest is only open until september 22nd so if you want to enter wait until the show's over but enter quickly all right fun stuff now i you know i get really excited about things like that I, the idea of having a backyard bar is very appealing to me because i like to entertain i like to have people over to the house and you know and stuff like that I would probably build my own backyard bar because I'm pretty handy with tools. Next, let's meet some other folks who are really handy with home improvement and improve uh, with home improvement. They're handy with home improvement. I am not on my game today. And the clicker didn't click. I just terrible today, terrible. All right, the uh, gentlemen that you see on your screen are known as Glorious Gladiators. Now, this group of people are all handymen. They're skilled in various areas of home improvement and stuff like that. So they, you know, electricians, plumbers, landscapers, whole bunch of stuff, drywall, flooring, the whole deal. These gentlemen came together in response to one event. So Gloria Scott is 72 years old. She lives in Massachusetts and she's very much on a fixed income. Well, unfortunately, when you're living on a super tight fixed income and something in your house breaks, if it's not essential to your survival, you don't fix it, right? Well, over time, when many things start to break, your home becomes unlivable. Unfortunately for Miss Gloria Scott, finally, the overhead lighting in her, her home broke. So she finally had to reach out to somebody to fix it because you just simply can't live without light in Massachusetts because it's one of the darkest states on the planet because that's where the Patriots are. <laughs> anyway, so she finally reached out to an electrician and an a, uh, electrician named John came over to her house and he fixed the light for her. This was on a Friday. He fixed the light for her, but he saw the terrible state of disrepair that this poor woman's home was in and it bothered him all weekend. So on Monday, he came back and he told her he was going to do his absolute level best to fix her home for her. In addition to that, he created a Facebook page called Nice Old Lady Needs Help. And through that Facebook page, he recruited local handymen and people who were willing to help out. And they were able to basically rebuild Miss Gloria Scott's home. They gave her new electrical, new plumbing. They fixed her broken down porch. They fixed, uh, you know, crumbling sheetrock walls. They repaired her ceiling. A whole bunch of stuff that needed to happen in this lady's house. She was so, so, so grateful. They didn't charge her a dime for it, all from the goodness of their own hearts. Out of that spawned Gloria's Gladiators. So now, with over 5,000 members of their Facebook group, these gentlemen go around providing um, home improvement and home you know, repair services for families in need all over the area. Really, really cool stuff. Again, every week we talk about this, sometimes we think that we just don't have the ability to help. You know, we see people in need and we feel for them. We, you know, we have the compassion, but we just don't have the ability to help. Well, once again, these guys prove that all it takes is a little bit elbow grease and a Facebook page so you can find like-minded people to help you out and you can get it done. So keep that in mind. Yeah. Glorious Gladiators doing a great job out there in Massachusetts. Really, really impressive stuff. Now, speaking of home improvements, the body is home of the soul. And we need to take care of that home as well. Let's see what can help us with that. Bone broth. Mm. A staple of Vietnamese cuisine, popularly uh, known in the United States as pho, but very, very common in a lot of other things. Bone broth is being researched at the moment to see all kinds of benefits that it has for the human body. Some of the benefits that it has that we already know about include it provides valuable nutrients that your body needs like glutamine and collagen. It's pretty awesome. It promotes gut and digestive health. It supports joint mobility. A lot of my friends are veterans and a lot of those guys are paratroopers or former infantrymen and stuff like that. And almost all of us have terrible joint problems. Well, 
bone broth might help. It also promotes healthy skin, hair, teeth, and nails. It can even help you sleep better. Well, why does it do all of that? Well, the reason it does all of that is because bone broth is made simply by boiling the snot out of the bones of animals, right? Bones contain a lot of stuff that's really important. So by boiling them down, you get all of the, the nutrients out of the bones and the marrow. It's really, really good. Now, you know, a lot of Native American cultures have been doing this for eons and a lot of, you know, Native cultures and all over the world, you know, Vietnam and Laos, Cambodia and places like that, they've been doing this for forever. And what's interesting is a lot of those cultures had longer natural lifespans than Europeans did in, in the same age. And you got to start to wonder, you know, does, does their cuisine have something to do with it? I think it would be foolish to think that it didn't, right? Natural foods are always infinitely better. Well, most of those cultures also existed on an idea that you use every part of an animal for a lot of reasons, religious reasons being chief among them in many cultures, but also it takes a lot of effort to hunt an animal and to, to kill an animal and bring it back. Why would you waste any part of something that you put that much effort into, right? So bone broth, nothing new. You simply boil the bones of an animal, whether it be it a, you know, a pig or a cow or, you know, um, you know, whatever other animal you're eating. I've even made bone broth with chicken bones and stuff like that. And it takes all of those nutrients out of the bone and the marrow and puts them into this wonderful broth and then you can add seasonings and vegetables and stuff like that to it and make whatever you want out of it um you know but just tons and tons of health benefits right that come from this stuff so super easy to make yeah if you're not a meat eater if you're a vegan or vegetarian it might be a little bit challenging for you there are a lot of things out there that you know you can use as supplements to get the same nutrients be a little bit more expensive because you gotta buy them at gnc and gnc is just ugh. Ah, overcharging for everything. Um, for you, man. For you. <laughs> Always leave bones in my green chili. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, like anybody who's ever made good green chili out there knows that you start with the bones, right? Like, that's how it works. So, yeah. Yeah, uh, Randy is a really smart dude. Um, who comes from Hispanic heritage and his family knows how to cook some dang food, man. I've been blessed to eat at Randy's Randy's home a couple of times. Ooh, they make some good green chili. Yowza. Anyway, uh, yeah, I know. I know, Jeebus. I want fun now, too. And where I live, there's nowhere to get decent fun either. It's horrible, horrible, horrible. But anyway, so, you know, consider adding some bone broth to, you, to your diet, you know, your eating habits and stuff. There's a lot, a lot of benefits from this stuff, and it's super cheap and easy to make. You know, if you if you don't go to the store and buy cuts of meat, you can always go to the local butcher shop and be like, hey, do you have any bones you're going to throw out that you'll sell me on, a, you know, on, on, the, on the cheap? And then just boil them up, make the broth into something. I've even made bone broth and just put it in, you know, thermoses and, and drank it because that stuff is good. All right. Yeah. So, you know, that helps the body. But what if I told you you could help your mind through video games? Let's find out. All right, the gentleman that you see on your screen, his name is Christopher Boehm. Now, Christopher Boehm is a United States Army veteran. And after his discharge from the Army, he experienced some depression and PTSD issues. Well, over the course of time, he found that video gaming was a good way for him to deal with some of those issues. He also started doing a lot of research and being confronted with the, the known fact now that 22 veterans a day are lost to suicide. That's a staggering number. Demographically, United States military veterans are the most likely to commit suicide in the country. Scary, scary stuff. And this is not just something that affects American veterans. Many of my friends are veterans uh, in militaries from all over the world, be it Poland or Canada or England, Scotland, you know, uh, Australia. And they all deal with the same thing. It's a common problem. So Christopher saw that problem and he decided to do something about it. So first what he did is he opened up a YouTube page, which you can find, it's, it's, his YouTube name is Bayonet X-Ray. And again, when we post the, the news sequence, that'll be linked in, in, the, in that description, okay? So Bayonet X-Ray, at sunrise every morning, he gets on and he plays video games live stream for 22 minutes in honor of the 22 veterans who will lose their fight with suicide that day. During his gaming, he also shares tips for how to deal with depression and PTSD, how to deal with stress. He shares healthy eating tips, breathing exercises, and all kinds of stuff to help you get through your day. 
Now, he emphasizes that this stream is not just for veterans, it's for anyone who's dealing with that depression, anxiety, PTSD, trauma, any of that stuff. It's really important. On the surface, it may not seem like somebody live streaming video games is gonna help with PTSD and depression. But if you tune in and listen to this guy, you'll, you'll see the wisdom in there. And his voice is just super calming and soothing. It's awesome streaming, you gotta check him out. Bayonet X-Ray, all right? Ladies and gentlemen, that is junk in the news. The Fists of Arkin is the debut novel by author Jack Kiesling. Action, adventure, and personal challenges are the focal point of this immersive book set against a backdrop of war. Deep character development and wide perspectives explore social issues relevant to the real world. Dive in and discover the answer to the age-old question faced by leaders many. What kind of royal will you be? This is a paid advertisement for Jack Kiesling Books and the Fists of Arkin. Oh, your applause are so appreciated. Mm. Ladies and gentlemen, what's up in Arkin? Well, there's a lot of things going on in Arkin. Before we get involved too heavily in what's going on in Arkin, I want to give a shout out uh, to some very, very close friends of mine. So last week on the show, we talked about Mike and Lacey Fuqua. We talked about all the struggles they've had with their baby, you know, um, in utero with spina bifida and doing the in utero surgery to try to help baby, you know, have a, a higher quality life. And then, unfortunately, you know, mommy's water broke way too early and they had to go to the hospital. And the plan was to stay in the hospital until baby was born. Baby Paisley was not due until October 13th. Well, baby Paisley has arrived. Yeah, baby Paisley was born yesterday. Um, I have not spoken to Michael Lacey yet out of respect for their time with their brand new baby and their family that is certainly flocking around, but they have posted a few pictures on Facebook and she is just the cutest thing in the world. I saw a photo Mike sent me a little, like just a moment before the show started um, where Lacey was holding baby Paisley and it's just absolutely adorable and I'm so happy for this family to, to have their baby and for the birth to go well and certainly there's going to be continuations of treatments and stuff because she came so early. But, and spina bifida is still, is still a problem, right? The in utero surgery doesn't take everything away and make it all daisies and roses, right? So there's still a long road ahead for this young family, but this step went right and I'm so happy for them. Guys, I love you so much. I can't wait to see you. And yeah, oh my God, I'm just so happy for you. Anyway, um, so that's, yeah, that's the biggest thing in my world right now. Uh, I, I'm just so I'm so excited and so happy for them. I think all of us, including them, were so scared. Um, we were so worried for them and just so happy to see it go well. So I kind of don't even really care about what's going on in Arkin. Uh, but that's the name of the segment, so I'm going to talk about it anyway. Um, many of you have noticed that over the last week, I've been much more actively involved in my YouTube channel. YouTube has always kind of been like the last social media channel that I worried about. So it's kind of, Facebook was primary. Oh, Lacey. Oh my God, I love you guys. Mm. I miss you so much. Um, so like Facebook was always my primary social media and then I went to Insta and then um, you know, Twitter and YouTube was kind of last and then, well, I guess Tumblr was behind that. And I do have a Snapchat, but nobody has it except like my wife and a few other people. So it doesn't really matter. But anyway, um, so I never really worried about YouTube that much and, you know, live stream on Facebook and then upload it to YouTube and just kind of, you know, not worry about it. But, you know, I, I've had to face the reality that if I want social media to be effective, I have to capitalize on every stream possible. So I've started doing a lot more work on YouTube. I put up a couple of new videos. I have another one that's primed to go up here pretty soon. Um, yeah, so really starting to build up that YouTube channel. So if you have not checked out my YouTube channel, I'll ask that you do that after the show. I'll put the link in the comments. But yeah, go check me out on YouTube, subscribe to my channel. Um, there's definitely gonna be some YouTube exclusive stuff that doesn't get crossed over to Facebook immediately. Um, you know, eventually it'll all come over, but yeah. And then I'll, I'll, I'll warn you guys now, like, you know, we're 10 episodes away from the end of this season, but when season two kicks off, uh, it's not gonna be live streamed on Facebook anymore. It's gonna be live streamed on YouTube. There's a number of reasons that I'm doing that and most of them revolve around you guys, the viewers. So we've been having a lot of problems the last month or so with viewers um, having their comments metered during the live stream. 
So they can only comment so many times. And that's really frustrating and I don't want to deal with that anymore. I want it to be the best experience possible for all of you guys. Um, so that's the biggest reason why we're gonna cross over to YouTube. The other reason I'm gonna cross over to YouTube is um, they do a lot better job of protecting uh, artists than Facebook does. Um, you know, so just from you know, making sure that nobody can steal my intellectual property, um, you know, copyrights and stuff like that. They do a much better job of protecting artists than Facebook does. So um, we're gonna keep it the way it is for the remainder of season one for the next 11 episodes. But when season two premieres, just be ready for it. It's going to be live streamed on YouTube. Eventually it'll get shared to Facebook, but not until after the live stream's over. So just something to keep in mind there, all right? Um, with that being said, you know, I'll be putting a lot of effort into building up the YouTube channel over the next few months, getting ready for that changeover. Um, yeah, you have, you have like four months to prepare, dude. Uh, Cause once season one is over, I'll take six weeks of an off season break before season two premieres. So, and then season two will be 20 episodes and then a six week break and then season three. So that's the way this thing's gonna work moving forward. It's gonna be crazy. Also be prepared. I just got signed on to a, a really, really cool initiative out of my company's home office. that's gonna involve me traveling a bit and some of that might be over the weekend. So there might be some disruptions to um, the, the live streaming dates for Jack Junkyard. I can't tell you what those are right now cause I don't know cause I haven't seen the schedule. But yeah, yeah, Randy, two seasons a year. Um, yeah, two seasons a year. It's gonna be crazy. It's gonna be really fun. Yeah. Uh, and Shums and I have been working on a ton of new stuff to add to the show. There are some segments of the show currently that are gonna go away and some new segments that'll show up. But, you know, you'll have to wait until we get to season two to see all of that. So, yeah, cool stuff. Um, yeah, so with all the stuff that I've been trying to do with social media over the last week or so, just getting all of the accounts up to speed and, and functional and stuff like that, I haven't really done a lot, um, you know, in terms of writing. So I'll get back to that tomorrow um, and then, you know, drive on from there. So look for more big things to come. Um, and you'll also see Jack's Junkyard get split up into different segments and uploaded separately on the YouTube channel so that you know interviews can be shared separately and the news segments and all of those things can be separated out. Just because it's, you know, when you guys jump on the live stream and it's super fun and we love it and it's awesome. But a lot of people see, you know, an hour and 10 minute video and they don't, they don't, you know, they don't want to, they don't want to dive into that. So it's a lot easier to get people interested in a 10 minute video than it is an hour video yep rest in peace ask me anything we will miss you yep is my insta link on my facebook yeah mm -hmm. absolutely yep all my socials medias are linked on my facebook except i think my tumblr is not linked on my social media or on my facebook page i'm not really sure why i just don't never did it i also don't really do a lot with tumblr so i don't really like tumblr very much but anyway yeah so that's enough about my story let's hear about somebody else's this week's story contest, super, super awesome. Uh, the title for this week, Tension in Suburbia. We only had one person enter the contest, so it was a landslide victory for Chris Gullick. Um, so let's take a listen to Chris Gullick's tale, Tension in Suburbia. <clears throat> I grab my cap and our dog Chester. We take notice the sunrise is as beautiful as ever, as the reddish-pink rays of sunlight pierce the dark, blackish-blue morning sky. We do the couple thing, and we take a selfie to post on our social media accounts. Our Disney-like suburban neighborhood is exactly what I dreamed about living in as a kid. The white picket fences, uh, nicely manicured lawns mowed in a perfectly cut diagonal, the mailboxes with the red flags up to signify the mail is ready, and even the friendly wave in the morning from our milkman. This morning was like most mornings. We turned out of our driveway for our daily mailbox. Wait, what? What about dri- Wait, what? Hold on. Oh, good lord. <laughs> we turned out of our driveway for our da daily morning pre-work walk. However, today we noticed a folded piece of paper taped to our mailbox. We figured it was just a flyer for one of our many neighborhood yard sales that were coming up, so we ignored until after we had come back from our walk. Christian gave it to me as we walked inside the house. As soon as I opened it, I could tell something was wrong. He asked... Hey, honey, what, what's wrong? Before he could finish speaking, I turned the note toward him so he could see what it said. Get out, you baby-killing abominations of God! Was written, written in red ink, along with a few words I can't bring myself to repeat, in a style made to resemble blood. We've lived here nine years, and this has never happened. Sure, we get the stares, and we get the whispers, but until now, everyone has been cordial toward us. 
We've never hidden who or what we are, but we've never flaunted it either. We decided to let this go, as maybe it was just some sort of juvenile prank. We kissed each other goodbye and went to work. After work, we decided to ask our neighbors if they had received anything similar over the past few days and weeks. As we went door to door, we noticed a lot of new faces. We also take notice of collectibles in their houses that uh, we see when they open the door. We notice the look in their eyes. After that night, the tension grew from more notes to now members of our neighborhood spreading false accusations, including uh, equating me to being a pedo because we were looking to adopt our first child. The tension continues to grow every day. I asked Christian on multiple occasions, is this the world we live now? How to gain control without letting this ruin our lives? He looked at me with a soul-piercing stare and said, we can't let them win. We can't let them ruin our lives. We are strong. As Christian was finishing his sentence, a flaming brick was thrown into our window, just missing me and shattering glass all over the carpet. Christian regained his composure and finished. We have to be stronger than hate. We have to show them we belong here. Guys, hit that heart button for, for Chris Gullick, uh, for his story, Tension in Suburbia. I think it's a really impactful story, right? Uh, there's a lot going on there. One, it's a continuation of the same characters he's created in other um, you know, stories that he's entered. And two, I think it's a very common issue right now, right? It's, it's something that we're seeing a lot of happen up uh, in the world. You know, just people, people rejecting those that they think are different and levying false accusations and stuff like that. And it's just crazy, crazy, crazy times we live in. So really cool story, man. Thank you for submitting that. Um, I also think it's wildly appropriate that you are now the, uh, the leader on the, uh, the win board for the story contest. So that's pretty cool. <laughs> um, yeah. Yeah. Especially because, you know, it was Chris's fault that this thing came back in the first place. So I used to do this. I did this a while ago. And then nobody really participated, so I deleted it. And then Chris got upset that I deleted it, so I brought it back. So I think it's appropriate that you're now um, in the lead for, for the season for wins. So really cool stuff there. Uh, that'll be posted up on my website, jackkeesling.com, later on this weekend. Yeah. For our next story contest, the title will be An Unlikely Reason to Kill. Hmm. Interesting. So the way this works, if you've never participated in the story contest or you've never seen the show before, write a short story with the title, An Unlikely Reason to Kill. Please try to keep it less than a thousand words. Yeah, the show's not that long. <laughs> um, then you post that short story in the comments section on the contest post that I will put up after the show. At the end of the week, when the next show gets ready to go live, the short story submission with the highest number of reactions will be read out loud on the show and featured on my website for one week. Pretty cool stuff, all right? If you have any questions or concerns about how to do that, how to write a short story or anything like that, please feel free to reach out to me on any of my socials medias, all right? Yeah. It takes a lot of talent to write a short story. It really does, and I'm very impressed with Chris's short stories. They've come a long way, and he's, he's writing some good stuff. I'm seeing like an anthology happening at some point in time. Speaking of talents, let's take a look and see what's going on on the Junkyard's Got Talent stage. Tonight, special guest to bring to the stage for the Junkyard's Got Talent. Somebody you've seen on the show many times, but she has never graced the talent stage. Ladies and gentlemen, put your hands together for the one, the only. Everybody loves her. She only belongs to me. Shums. Jack's Junkyard. Hashtag Shums Taps. I am not throwing away my shots. I don't want to fight my country. I'm young, scrappy, and hungry, and I'm not throwing away my shots. I'm going to get a scholarship to King's College. I probably should not brag a gag. I'm amazed and astonished. The problem is I got a lot of brains and no polish. I got a holler just to be heard with every word. I drop knowledge. I'm a diamond in the rough. A shiny piece of coal trying to reach my goal. My power of speech unimpeachable. Only 19, but my mind is older. It's New York City streets get cold. I show that every bird and every disadvantage I've learned.
I love it. I love it. And first of all, I love watching my wife perform. It doesn't really matter what she's doing. Um, it doesn't matter if she's dancing, singing, acting. I don't really care. I love watching her on stage. She's just super, super captivating. Now, she is in a, uh, a this is her first time in a tap class. So she's never uh, tried tap before. So it's a new talent, new skill set for her. Really excited to see her do that. Also, interestingly enough, a lot of people don't know this, and she probably slapped me for saying this, but my wife is very comfortable on stage. She hates being on camera she hates it she gets really upset with me every time i try to put her on camera i've been trying to get her to do junkyard's got talent since i brought this segment out 10 episodes ago right i'm trying to get her to do it since then she finally let me put this video up and i just i got so excited for it so um yeah but you know on to the other judges simon what do you think well you know uh tapping is uh, age old form of dance yes quite right simon quite right and, uh, you know, she capitalized brilliantly. I mean, choreography was a little slow, but, you know. Um, what? Oh, man, I just got a notification that Facebook blocked out that segment of the show because of copyrighted music. I know it's copyrighted music! I'm not trying to make money off of it. Chill out. Anyway, <laughs> enough of that. I don't care. Kelly Rowland, you love it. Demi Lovato, you love it. Whoever you are, you love it. Awesome. I love it. Awesome. Fantastic. Only two live acts, or well, not live, but only two new acts left for the Junkyards Got Talent before we begin the playoffs, counting down to the Junkyards Got Talent champion. So, tune in next week to see one of the last brand new talents you'll ever see on the Junkyards Got Talent. Fun stuff. Stand by for these words from your local station. Deanna Hawkins is a retired U.S. Army soldier and Medal of Honor recipient enjoying the quiet life of an artist in Portland, Oregon. Without her knowledge, documents proving diabolical manipulation of the American people, perpetrated by the government, fall into her lap. Forced to run for her life, Deanna must work with unlikely companions to deliver the files to the people. Sinister forces strive to stop her, while an unknown guardian angles for her success. This success could result in the Second American Civil War, while failure could cement the power of tyrants for generations to come. Under the weight of that knowledge, Deanna Hawkins will discover what it means to walk the thin red line between duty and death. You know what really grinds my gears? People using 2020 as an excuse to be crappy people. Let's talk about what I mean. So I was on Facebook um, last week and I was joking around with a friend of mine and I said something about 2020, you know, is the new excuse for everything, right? And we joked around a lot about it for a little bit and eventually I said that 2020 uh, is now the excuse that allows me not to take personal responsibility for any of my shitty decisions. <laughs> you know, and it was a joke in the moment, but I started thinking about it later on and I realized that I actually see a lot of people doing that. There's a lot of people using 2020 as an excuse for all kinds of stuff, right? Anytime something goes wrong, they're like, man, it's 2020, who cares? It's 2020, right? I also see a lot of people who are constantly on Facebook talking about how bad 2020 is. Yeah, 2020 has been a rough year, but think about it. Is it really any worse than any year we've been in in the past or are we just more aware of it this year, right? Because, I mean, think about it. The political situation in this country has been this bad for a long time. Yeah, you know. Racial equality has been this bad in this country for a long time. Gender equality has been this bad for a long time. This is nothing new. Right? We're, we're just paying more attention to it now. So, <laughs> the show's live, but no one can comment. That sucks. I'm sorry. Yeah. So, you know, I just, I think that using 2020 as an excuse or as that, yeah, 2021 will be better. I see that happen a lot too. Here's the thing, 2021 is only gonna be better if you do something to make it better. 
Yeah. 2020 hasn't been that bad of a year. I mean, it certainly has been bad for some people. I'm not going to deny that there are some people who have had a rough year, but there's some people that have rough years every year. You know? Because being a human in this country is hard. Being a human on this planet is hard. And, you know, and sometimes life bites you in the ass. But I'm just saying, like, what has really been that bad about 2020? I mean, unless you've had, you know, deaths in the family or, you know, like significant personal injury or something like that. I mean, I. I it hasn't really been that bad, you know? So I just, I feel like we got to stop accepting that 2020 is the excuse for everything, right? We just got to stop thinking that way because it's not, you know? It's not that bad. And if you really feel like it's bad, then do something about it. There's a lot, a lot of stuff about this year and about the past decade or in my entire life that I don't agree with. I don't agree with the way, you know, my black and brown brothers and sisters are being treated in this country. I don't agree with the way Native Americans are, being, are treated in this country. I don't agree with the way, you know, a lot of um, homosexual couples are treated in this country. I don't agree with the way that a lot of women are treated in this country. I don't agree with the way women athletes are treated in this country. I mean, there's a lot of things that I don't agree with in this country, but I do my damnedest to expose those realities and to make my voice heard and to stand by the people who are fighting those fights. You know, if it's not an issue that I can fight about because, you know, whatever, you know, then I do my best to give support and to stand by the people who are fighting that issue. And and, and I'm not a saint by any stretch of the imagination. You know what I mean? Like, I, I don't know who I was talking to this week, but I said something about, look, I may be a bastard, but I'm a bastard with morals, right? And so when I think about, you know, 2020, you know, you know what it's going to take for 2021 to be a good year for all the bullshit that's happened to us in 2020 to not be an issue anymore? You know what it's going to take? you it's gonna take you choosing to not carry over any of the bullshit look and i'm not saying that you know um i'm not saying that there won't be wildfires next year i'm not saying that covid will disappear on new year's eve you know and we'll go into 2021 brands shiny new i'm not saying that i'm not saying that your financial issues will go away i'm not saying any of that but i'm just saying like you can choose to be a better freaking human being to your fellow man you can choose to not use whatever you know circumstances are happening around you that are beyond your control as an excuse to be a douchebag. It's fine. Be a bastard. But be a bastard with morals. You know what I mean? I'm just saying. All right? So that's what grinds my gears is people using 2020 as an excuse to not do anything to improve their lives or improve their worlds or as an excuse to be a shitty person. You gotta stop. Excuses are for weak people. Victory belongs to the, those who are going to strive for it and fight for it. Hands in, boys. We got a world to change. With that note, ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for being a part of this adventure. I'm so sorry for the technical issues and Facebook killing comments on the live stream and a whole bunch of other nonsense going on. <laughs> what a disaster. What a disaster. I'm so sorry for all that stuff, but I really genuinely appreciate everyone who tunes into the show, who contributes information and sends me links to news stories and all kinds of stuff. You guys are amazing. If you want to see something featured on the show, you can reach out to me on any of my social medias. Send me links. Tell me stuff, whatever you want to do. If it fits the format of the show, I'll put it on. If you know somebody who's an artist, a creator, a nonprofit leader, a musician, anybody who you think should be featured on Junkyard Interviews, let me know. Put me in touch with them. Send me a Facebook message or an Insta message or any of my social medias. It's totally fine. Reach out to me and let me know what you got. All right? If you want to sponsor the show and have your business featured in a commercial segment for Jack's Junkyard, let me know. My rates are very fair. <laughs> All right? Ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for being a part of the journey today. We'll see you around the interwebs. Love you guys very much. I'm Jack, and I'm out.